In this presentation, we will take a look at options that can be used to import items such as items, customers, and vendors. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We currently have the Home tab open. We have the Open Windows open, which you can find by going to the View dropdown and selecting the Open Windows list. Now we're going to start to populate different items within QuickBooks. As we do so, we want to consider the different types of options we have in order to populate information. In other words, we want to include things such as vendors into QuickBooks, customers, and items into QuickBooks. For example, our goal here is to add vendors and not only the vendors, but the beginning balance, what is owed to us with regards to vendors. Now here, I already have an example of us having entered this information so that we can consider these options. To do this, let's go to the uh, reports dropdown. We're gonna go to the company and financial. We're gonna take a look at the balance sheet standard. And I wanna change the date to 121 uh, 20. This is gonna be, or let's make it the beginning of the year, obviously, 0101 uh, 20. January 1st, 2020. This is the current year that we will be working in. Now, the beginning balances we're gonna to want to have, note we have the accounts receivable. We're gonna to need to add this. Here, we've already added it. If we have nothing from scratch, we had an old bookkeeping system where we were doing some books, we're now putting in the beginning balances here. Our goal then as of the beginning of the year is to add the beginning balance for the accounts receivable and the supporting information, which means who owes us the money, the customers. That then should be supported by the reports dropdown. I'm going to go down to the customers and receivable and go to the accounts receivable uh, or the customer balance detail report. That'll break out that 20500 by customer, in this case, Anderson Jones Smith. So if we hadn't input this information, then we need to enter then this information into the system. This is it being completed already. This is what we're going to do in future presentations. And we're going to have to enter the Anderson Jones and Smith and the related information for them. That information then will then be summarized in the accounts receivable. That's related to the customers. We're also gonna to have to do something related to inventory. What if we already have inventory on hand that we need to put in the system? We wanna set up the inventory items that we have on hand. When we do so, it'll create the inventory account. Here's the inventory account with what we currently have. We also need QuickBooks to be tracking the supporting information of the types of inventory that we have. We call those items, inventory items. So if we select the reports, then we need this to be tracking inventory. And I'm going to go to the inventory valuation as of uh, 12.01.20. And that'll give us the list of inventory, the cost, this cost, then matching 2568. I'm going back to the balance sheet. What is on the balance sheet 2568 back to the inventory in the open windows. And then we also want uh, the value of it that we're going to be charging for. This is the retail price of it, tracking the actual types of inventory, in this case being guitars, Epiphone guitars, and that's who we buy it from, type of guitar, Epiphone, and then the Gibson type of guitars, tracking the quantity on hand. So we're going to go through in future presentations and add this information. And then we also need the payables. What if we already have people that we owe money to? These are the people we buy from. We set up the vendors owe money to them. We need then again to set up the actual account in the payable account. That's going to be the 15,000. And then the supporting vendor who we owe this to. So we got to go to the reports. We're going to go up top and we want the vendor. We want the uh, vendor balance detail. So vendor balance detail. Uh, this is owed to Epiphone. There's the same 15,000, only one vendor that we owe to. So we need to, we want to set up that information for the beginning in the beginning balances. Now, if the new company that we've never done anything in the past, we won't have any of these beginning balances. However, if we're changing from one accounting system to another, we will have these beginning balances and we'll want to enter this data in there. Note, we also want to enter it in such a way that it's going to be populating the current time period and not throw off the income statement for uh, the prior, you know, for the current time period. So we'll discuss how to do that in future presentations. Here, we just want to note there's a few different options you can do to import this information. 
One way is basically if you have something in Excel uh, or some related type of spreadsheet, if you were going to export the customers or the vendors or the items, then you could take that Excel uh, sheet and use it to basically import. So if you had an Excel sheet such as this, these are the inventory items, and you were going to import it, you could, that's one option that you can do. Now, it's not as straightforward and as easy to import uh, the information from Excel to QuickBooks because you have to make sure that the columns all line up as you do so. We're going to be using a data input screen in future presentations in order to do this, but I want to just show you uh, this option on how to basically think about the importing process. So the importing field can be found at, if you go to the File tab, drop down, we go to the Utilities, and then you have the import. If you see it within the import, notice these arrows, you gotta be kind of careful when you get to these arrows, you gotta go over before, you know, before the arrow closes. And then you gotta go over here, the Excel files, other types of files that can be uh, imported. If we have, for example, the Excel file, you're gonna go uh, to this screen and then you can continue forward and it'll help you to walk through the entry of the Excel information. We have the, we then have the wither the wizard, which is going to help us walk through the setup process. Select the type of, type of data you want to add to QuickBooks. So in our case, we were thinking about the uh, products that we sell, which are going to be inventory items. So we could go from there. Now, if you have a really long list, this is probably worth doing to set up this information. It can be a little bit tedious, and so we're going to take a look at another format to enter this data as well, which is still kind of a bulk upload type of information, but it's less likely to have, or it might be easier in some cases. So I'm gonna close this out. Now there's a couple different ways you can get into basically a, a data input type screen within the system. Now, if we're, if we're gonna be adding information, note that if we're going to vendors, of course, we can go to vendors. And if I wanted to add vendors, I can add uh, one vendor at a time here in the vendor center add a new vendor if we're going to go to the customers I can go to the customers here and if I wanted to add new customers I can do them of course one at a time with new customers and with items that's going to be in the items lists I can go to the lists drop down items list and then we can add these items uh, in, a, in a one at a time new item. These are the inventory items. These are the three things that we will be doing in the future presentations. We'll be uploading these. Now, another way that you can enter in a more bulk fashion than one at a time, and there's a couple different ways to get to a field such as this. One is we go to the lists drop down, and we could go to the very bottom, which says add, edit, multiple lists. So add, edit, multiple lists. And this will give us kind of a summary of, of many of the of the bulk kind of lists that we can have. So we have the customers here, drop down vendors, and then the drop down the service items and the inventory items. This is in essence what we will be uh, using to enter that information in the future. Note that once you have this, if you were to take something like the Excel sheet, and don't do this, this is just an example, but if I was to line up the columns, and we'll explain how to do this in future presentations, you could then basically copy and paste this information. If I was to copy this, and if everything is lined up properly, and then go on, on this side and in essence paste that information to the, the fields here, and that should make it a little bit easier for the bulk entry. So that might be easier to do, I believe it is in many cases, than to actually import the Excel worksheet. So you might just simply go in here and bulk copy and paste to do that. You're gonna have to line up the columns to be uh, correctly lined up, which you could do with the customized columns as we'll see in future presentations and then copy and paste. So, and, so unless there's a really lot of information, that's what I would recommend doing going into the bulk screen here, taking that information in from something like Excel, copying and pasting it into the proper fields here that making it a bit easier for you to check that information as you enter the data as you go whereas if you simply upload uh, the importing feature then it could be a little bit more difficult to kind of check the information it just kind of all appears and if it's a little out of whack when it and when it gets uploaded then you got to go in and fix it if you go in this way it might be easier to basically see exactly what you're doing i believe it is easier and then you can basically populate these fields now we're going to get to a, this basic same screen from a bit different of an area. So I'm going to close this back out. When we go to the vendor center, you can also get to this screen by going to vendors, the vendor center. 
And then when you select a drop down, instead of having one vendor, uh, this is actually the customers. So if one, no, this is this is the vendor. Instead of having one vendor, we can go to add multiple vendors. And then we'll have a similar basically uh, input screen. We could then adjust the input screen. We can then copy and paste information into it if we so choose. Now I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to close out of this. We could do the same for the customers. If we go into the customers here, we can then go into the drop down as we'll do in the future. Instead of going to the new customer, we can add multiple. And once again, we're going to have a, a, a mass kind of input screen. It's already populated here. We'll discuss this is the technique that we will be using in the future, which I think is the most uh, appropriate or easiest technique for most people. And we can do the same thing and copy and paste into here, closing this out and closing this out. Same item could be done with the items. So if we go to the lists, we go to the items, uh, the item list. This is kind of the most confusing one. It'll be the longest data input. Again, we've already populated it here. And this is what we will be populating in future presentations. You go to the items drop up instead of one new item. You can edit, uh, edit the items, uh, edit the multiple items. Add, here it is. Add, edit, multiple items. Add, edit, multiple items. And you'll have a similar type of thing. These are going to be inventory items and service items. As we enter these, these are the service items. And these are going to be the inventory items. So same kind of screen, another way to basically get to this uh, screen to input this information. So there you have uh, this information we're going to be inputting into the future. Also note that these items within here, of course, as well as the information for the vendors and the customers will help us within the home tab to populate things such as the invoice. When we select the invoice, we want to be able to have the items that will be driven down here. So here's the inventory items, which will drive the reporting of the invoice. So we want to make that as, as systematically easy as possible so that we can set up the items and then hopefully have someone else or ourselves add the invoices later in a very easy way, a non-time consuming way if we set up everything properly. And obviously the customers then up top should be set up here as well once we have them set up. We can of course add new customers as we create an invoice. However, uh, we might want to set up our current customers first. And as we do so, when we're starting the new company file, we do want to set up the customer balances first, who owes us money so that we can then track that. Closing this back out, we're not going to save it. Uh, do you have recorded? Do you want to save? No. And then the bills, of course, if we were to add a bill, then the vendors would pop up in the vendor screen. Uh, so we only have the two vendors here that we're going to set up. We haven't set them up yet. This is this is what we're going to do in the future. So those are going to be the items that we're going to be setting up in the future. This is going to be the, the most kind of data input stuff that we need to do to basically get the behind the scenes working within QuickBooks, setting up the inventory items being the most tedious of the items to do. Once set up, however, the future process of creating invoices, creating sales receipts, not having to think about the billing kind of thing that you already have set up because hopefully you have the system set up in terms of how much you're going to bill for particular items set up that billing item already and that makes the system or the process of actually going through the billing much easier than kind of trying to rethink everything every time you enter another uh, invoice or another sales receipts how much is it charging and this and that you want this all to be systematic for a store, if it was a store, for someone else to be able to simply create an invoice or sales receipt very easily, or for yourself, so that you're not constantly going back and basically reworking the system. Uh, you want it to be as standardized as possible, generally.